Dominica. Well, thank you very much for that lovely introduction. I'm really happy to you know, be there. I'm not really, but uh, kind of where some, someday I could be, be there. Uh, <clears throat> but meanwhile, let's, let's do another virtual get together. Uh, probably questions at the end would be best because I tend to lose my train of thought if, <laughs> if I get interrupted, but it shouldn't be that long. There should be plenty of time for questions. So let me share my screen because I do have a presentation ready for you. And hopefully you all can see that. Uh, it, it's very interesting that, that you, Ingrid, that you said uh, about having trouble getting Gmail to work because I wrote about the Gmail R package a few years ago. And when you asked me to present about sending email uh, with, uh, and uh, I went back to the article I wrote about the Gmail R package a few years ago. And the authentication process has changed because Google specifically uh, doesn't allow what they consider to be insecure apps anymore. And it, it became very complicated to authenticate. So I actually started working on a whole presentation on how to authenticate with Gmail R. And I did end up finishing it. And that stuff is at the end of my presentation, which I probably won't go through because it's kind of ridiculous. Instead, I found an even better package, uh, emaily, which works both with Gmail and with other email too. So it's even better. And I'm going to do that. And it's way easier to set up. So I am going to, so here we are, Gmail and not so much, emaily, let's get to it. So why emaily? Uh, it should work for almost any email account where you have SMTP access, not just Gmail. Uh, the best thing about this is you can create email from an R markdown file which can include the results of your R code, uh, not like HTML interactive widgets, but static ggplot plots you can include in your email, which I think is super cool. Uh, the name comes from the Zulu word for email. I don't know how to pronounce that, emaili, uh, but that's, that's how it's named. So there are four actually much easier than Gmail R steps to, to doing this. One is you create a message object with the envelope function. Two, you add your two from subject and body to that message object. Next, you create a server connection object with the server function. And then you send your message using the server connection. Uh, and this is really pretty easy and straightforward. So let's take a look at how this works. So there are two kind of syntaxes for how to create your, your email message object. Uh, and it can be either text or HTML. So if you look here, you can see one is, is the un envelope you create, you create the object and then you use pipes. I, I'm trying to get myself to use the new built-in pipes with the latest version of R as opposed to the greater older pipes. That, but I mean, you can use the older pipes too. I'm just trying to be good about here. Uh, and you see the from, the to, the subject, and the text. HTML, it's very similar, except instead of text at the bottom, it's HTML. Uh, that's syntax one. Uh, the second syntax, it's kind of similar, except you put the same information as arguments inside the envelope function. It, it works exactly the same. Uh, again, you've got text or HTML. If you want to render an R markdown file, instead of putting the text or the HTML in the function, you just use this render. So everything else is the same. You just use render and then the name of the file. If you'd like to add an attachment, optional, if you use the attachment, either argument or the, the function here. But before I go on about that, I would like to talk a bit about our Cody, our studio code snippets, because they're really useful both for this and for like every other thing that you do in R if you use R studio. So if you've never used them, uh, I'll, a brief explanation, they're a way to store code for easy retrieval and reuse. RStudio has a special snippet file that you can access to edit with the use this packages edit RStudio snippets function, which you see here that will open up your, your snippets file, whether you're on Mac or whether you're on Windows. So here's what an email snippet might look like. You define it with the word snippet and a space followed by the name of the snippet. In this case, let's say my underscore email. I like to start my custom snippets with my underscore. 
and because then they'll show up in a drop down list all together when you're in our studio, and I'll show you that in a bit. All the lines of code for the snippet have to start with a tab, though. You can't really see that here, uh, but it's got to be a tab. And if you want extra spaces, that's fine. Uh, but if you indent with only spaces instead of starting with a tab, it won't work. Now, these, these things here, like the, the, the dollar sign, the bracket, the number, the quotation, uh, the, the colon, that signifies a snippet variable. So let me switch to our studio and try to show you how this works. Hopefully you can see this. And I'm going to open up a new file here. And I'm gonna just do my underscore. And hopefully you can see this, but there's a whole dropdown of all of my custom snippets that I've done myself. And I've got my email here. Now, if I click this, look what pops in. You get like the whole thing here. So I don't have to remember the format. Uh, I I put my from address here, and now you see my my. That's what the variable means. My cursor has automatically popped into the first place where I want to change the information. So we'll change this to you here. Another second tab. Look, it pops into the next thing. I don't even have to move my cursor around. My subject render. You know, you can do this whatever you want. Same deal. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> and oops, should have done that. Sorry. And then I don't have an attachment. So I highly, separately from learning how to do email, I, I really highly recommend using snippets. And if, so it's edit our studio snippets. If you use the use this package and this function, the snippet file pops up and you can just, you can see there's a whole bunch of built-in ones here. Uh, but you can add your own, either at the top of the file or at the bottom of the file, whenever. So anyway, that snippets, a little bit of digression, but I, I do love to point that out in my presentations because then you don't have to remember all this stuff. Or look up the help files. Okay, so here we are. Next <clears throat> is creating your server connection. And that's how it knows. The first thing was just the message. The second thing is the server connection. So you can actually use that to connect to your email and send it. So you've, you've got to put your host here, the port, your username, and the password. Uh, if you have ever set up your email in an email desktop client like Thunderbird or on a mobile device, you've probably done something similar. But unlike email software, OK, your R script is not going to, when you type in your password, if you do that in email software or, or other specialized software, It'll mask your password with the asterisk. If you do that in your R script, uh, it's just plain text. And you know, if you're home and no one is ever walking by you or using a, your computer ever, maybe you want to do that. I am a former security reporter at Computer World, and I am very paranoid. So I use the keyring R package to store my passwords. And here we are at another digression, but I really do like to point this out to people when I'm doing presentations that involve passwords. So the, the, if you don't want to use the keyring package, you can store your password in, in an R environment variable. And, and that's, you know, that's certainly a lot better than, than doing it just in plain text. It's still sitting in plain text in your R environment variable, but you're unlikely to accidentally stick it on GitHub or whatever. But this is what I like to do. If you're security conscious, I highly recommend the keyring software uh, library, I'm sorry, the queuing R package. So you can create a new queuing if you would like to, or you can just use the default one. Then you do key underscore set. You set the name of the thing you want it to be. You can specify the queuing if you don't want to use the default one. And then you just do key underscore get to get it. And then you can lock it if you want. And I just want to show you briefly what that looks like. So I've got a queuing test file here. So I'm going to do this. And then when I do, I'm going to, if I wanted to create a new one, I could do that. And then I could like make a password protected one. The default one automatically unlocks when you log into your system the way like Apple queuing does too. Okay. So let's say I want to set a password. So I'm going to do that and see how this thing pops up. It, so you, you type it in here. You don't type it in plain text, which I love. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and I'm going to hit OK. And now 
I can I can use this inside an argument and it will never show. But if you want to if you want to like see what it is, you, you you can see it that way. So I I another digression, but just a, another extra tip. I, I I at the end of the present I forgot to make my GitHub repo for this public, but I'll do that like right after I finish here. And there is going to be a link to the slides and the repo at the end. And you just have to give me five minutes to make sure that it's public before you go with the link. That's why I don't have a link now. Anyway, so we're back here. And so this is my connection setup. Oh. I've got my host, I've got my port, and I've got my username, and then the password I've got in here. So you never see it, which is the best. Okay. Gmail, uh, recently, Gmail has stopped allowing you to have insecure apps use your Google account password. So there are a bunch of different ways to deal with this. The e emaily author suggests this and it works fine for me because I tested it on a new account that I just set up because my old one is grandfathered so I can actually use the old way, but, but this one I can't, okay. So what you wanna do is you wanna go to the security settings on your Google account, uh, turn, two-step verification on, and then look around to see where it says app password. And I already have one set up in my screenshot here now, but uh, you probably will have none. And when you click on that, you should see something like this, where you have an option to select an app and then select a device. So the app is definitely gonna be mail because you're sending mail and the device obviously depends, probably either a Mac computer or a Windows computer. And it will generate a password just for your Gmail. So you're not using your whole account password, which is really helpful if you if this is like a work thing and you've got other secure things in there and other secure access. Like, I mean, I'm not using my work Gmail account here, obviously. Uh, but you know, I have other things like Google Analytics in there. So, you know, anyway, so but the good news is if you're doing Gmail, th there's a email ha has a separate server connection, so you don't have to use the regular one. You can use like the Gmail one and because it knows the, the SMTP server and the host. So you can just put in your username and your password and you are good to go. So the next thing, if you want to do an R markdown document and include results of your R code, and really who wouldn't want to do that? Uh, you create your R markdown document. It's pretty much the same as a usual one. Uh, I just do the title and the output of the HTML document. The one thing that's different here, if you look at the setup chunk on the first line, there's this include underscore CSS and then this. Uh, the email -y documentation says that some email software clients, including Gmail, can have trouble with other CSS. So he suggests doing this. And so I just do that and it seems to work for everything. So uh, I am not a CSS expert, but it works. So, so here I've just got some fun things where I'm actually, I haven't, <laughs> weather is another one of my interests. So I actually have a, an internet enabled weather station out in my yard and uh, there's an API there. So you can get the current, you can get the current temperature at Sharon's weather station. So if we, look at this just for fun apis okay so that's what it says here uh the temperature at my weather station is 20.9 celsius as of 11 20 a.m eastern time it feels that i've got the feels like and i've got the dew point just because i can all right so uh but then i, I do some like more normal things like um, um i'm loading data here i'm making a db plot and so so there you go Okay, so now here I'm creating an email message from that R markdown file using that envelope function. I've got the from, the to, the subject, and the render. Here I'm using render with that email file, R markdown email file. Now, if I wanted to see metadata about this, I could actually use the print, the, the regular print function with, 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 with the message object, and it'll show you the basic metadata. 
if you do details equals true, you're going to see like everything, but not like, you're not going to see like the graph, you're going to see the encoded graph and it's not really worth doing unless it's text only, but uh, <clears throat> just FYI. And then you use your server connection to send the message object and you cross your fingers and you hope it works. So this is what it, sh this is what it should look like in my Gmail. <clears throat> I'm going to try a live demo and see if that's exactly what it does look like. So let's, Let's try my, my code again. So it's going to, my snippet again, it's going to be my, my underscore, it's going to be my underscore email. Okay, so it's going to be two, I'm going to be using a, oh, whoops, sorry. Yeah, testing at macros.com, something I'm, okay. Okay, my weather email. Test. Okay, the file is actually called, what do I call it? My email file, I think. Yes, my email file. So take that out. Okay, so if we are, oh, let's make sure I've loaded the library here. Maybe move this up a bit. And then let's see what happens here. So I should, okay, so it's, if I want to see the metadata, So there it is, that's good. Just to show you what I mean by details equals true. This is not really helpful at all. You're just getting the encoded graphics. So that, that's, that's not really helpful. All right, so next I wanna do my, my Gmail connection, which I believe is that, yeah, okay. So I have that. I'm going to run that code. So that creates my connection and notice I've got Oh, I did set a username in my key ring. You don't have to do that. I did that. So this way, when I list what's in there, I can see which Gmail, because I have multiple Gmail accounts. That's optional too. I should mention that. All right. So now here, here we go. Wait, wait, wait. First, I must show you that here we are. Okay. So here we are. No email in here. <laughs> so we'll see if it really does send live. All right. Back to our studio. We are going to use my Gmail connection. And I'm going to send my message and let's see what happens. Fingers crossed, everyone. All right, allegedly it's sent. Let's see what happens. This. And there it is. It's amazing, a live demo and it works. So let's see what it looks like. Come on. So there we are. So the current temperature as of 1120 Eastern, time on September 13th. That is, it updates every 20, every 10 minutes. So not, not every minute. And there, and there is my ggplot graph. So it is as easy as that. The Gmail R, the package that's specifically for Gmail. The one advantage I liked about it is you could create drafts before sending, which you could view in Gmail. And you can, if you wanted to use it to like manage your whole account, which I really don't need to, but you could do that. But the disadvantage is, as I said, it's Gmail only, of course, and then the new authorization is super complex. So I am not really a fan of that. But I mean, <laughs> ah, I'm going to, I mean, this is, if you want to go through this, but I mean, seriously, this is what you're having just to send an email. This is all the steps so and then i i did the same thing in that uh you're going to get that it's like alarming it's like so anyway so I, I am no longer a fan of that package because of google's authentication changes uh but i will leave this in here uh that's another thing is i i saw this in my desktop client which was but then in, in, in my webmail, it like looked kind of weird after all of that. So, yeah, you know. Uh, there are other email art package options, Blastula from, from our studio. I played around with that. I, I like, I've used it in the past. I like email it, emailing better, but if that doesn't work for you, you might want to take a look at it. 
Uh, this is another one I use if you are an Outlook user and we are a Microsoft shop at work, specifically to send Outlook email and, or also to use Teams messages. Uh, that's a really nice one. Uh, the authentication for that can be a little tricky as well, but not nearly as bad as Gmail. Uh, either it works or it doesn't work. Uh, and I did write an article about Microsoft 365R and I hope so. Here are the more re resources. This one is not public yet because I forgot, sorry, but as soon as we finish this, <laughs> I will make it public and you can use it. Uh, and I've also got a link to my, sorry, my, uh, where is it? Oops, sorry. Uh, this, is, this is my article if you're interested in the, in the queuing package and I, I really highly recommend that. And uh, I really do want to, this is my InfoWorld article on Gmail R. I really need to update it because the authentication changed. You can see it from three years ago. I was meaning to update it before this presentation and well, that never happened, but uh, some, sometime soon, I hope. Uh, and uh, for more R tips, uh, I, I have a series at InfoWorld, do more with R, here's the link to it. Uh, I've got, I'm sorry, my, my my, my Zoom controls are like right on top of my tabs here. So, uh, uh, and it's actually a, a searchable table of, of all my tutorials. So like if you search for email, you can see all the ones that, that are available. So, so that is it. We have hopefully time for questions. Thank you, Sharon. Um, I'm glad you said that your your article there on R and Gmail R um, needs updating and that the Gmail authentication was hard because I think that's exactly where I was struggling. At all. <laughs> so it, it, I'm glad I'm glad I'm human. <laughs> you know. No, I mean it's it's crazy. I mean uh, I work. I mean I work with Google developer stuff a lot. And it's still complicated. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not showing this to people in a presentation. Yeah. It's not worth the effort when you can do yeah. it so much easier this way. That's it. Yeah, I'm so glad. Yeah. Because um, I think we, I had it uh, for a third year course. We set it up uh, two years before that. And then I think it was quite straightforward. And then when I tried to do yeah. it again, I was like, mm -hmm. what is going Why is something not working? Yeah, I mean, code is beautiful. Everything was so, I think that's exactly uh, the issue. It's authentication that I had to redo. Yeah, the, the problem is, I think it was in May or it was sometime where Google, just, you used to be able to say to do in your Google account to say, yes, I will allow like, un you know, un unverified mm. apps to use my account. And now you can't. And that's. Uh, OK, that's probably exactly it. All oh, right. God, Any the stopped and the sun came out and now I re oh, holy cow. Now I look like super bright. Sorry. That's <laughs> uh, you look perfectly fine. Um, there was a question earlier on from yeah. Akil. I think one of your first slides, um, the two attribute can accept multiple email email addresses. Um, can you put a, a more than one email address there in the two? Or what yes. do you say? I, I, I yes, I should have mentioned that you sh you should be a you should be able to just do a like a, a, a you use the C in the parentheses and, and mm. you do, you know, like you would for an, any kind of like yeah. you know, gray and string. Yeah. Mm. I know the Gmail operators could do it, so I'm sure that's yeah, one it would be the same. I should have, I, I should have actually, I should have actually. Yeah, so this is the, this is the package. I should, so, so, so you, so you can see here, this, I, I should have put a link on there, but I mean, anyone can use Google and find it. Uh, but you can see here. Well, that's interesting. If you use this format, he's not even using a, he's not using the C. You just, you just, oh, I, I, I take that back. I'm glad I looked. So you actually do a single string, a comma separated single string in the two fields. Or, or a vector. You can do, you can do, you can do either. Well, that's pretty slick. Right. Yeah. So that it takes all of it. That's very interesting. I should, I should. Very like, versatile. Let's, let's, sorry. Let's, let's, <laughs> like, who can see that? Nobody can see that. All right. 
So. Oh, so it's one whole string. You can do it. You can do it. Yeah. You can do it as a single. You can do one whole string, or as or as a vector. So see, see, you can. He lets you mm. do either the the vector with this this C parentheses or a single string. You can, or apparently, without the C. I don't even mm. know how he does that. That's that's kind of magic. I I wish all of our work that way. But <laughs> no, I like the C and R. It makes it unique. Makes you think about what you do. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's great until you have a until you have a string that's like that, and you have to like separate it. Then, then this is true. <laughs> um, any questions from anyone else? Things you'd like to try now that you've seen this possibility? And I hope if everyone is not using code snippets sometime this week, you will go home and play with our studio code snippets mm. because they really are a lifesaver. That's very cool. I haven't seen that before. I'll look at that as well. Um, Sharon, maybe I'm just thinking, maybe we must, um, would you be keen to give us a, a keyring demo at, in another seminar, perhaps? I think it's a very useful um, um, uh, uh, tool that we should be using but, in general. Know, I mean, I mean, honestly, it it's it's like five minutes, you know. It's, okay, it's okay, and it's not worth the whole <laughs> seminar. <laughs> well answered. <laughs> but I do. But if you are if you are super interested in that, you know, it's. I mean. Mm. You know, seriously, my, 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 my video here is, is four minutes. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. So it's not even five minutes. <laughs> no, yeah. So <laughs> awesome. Okay. I don't think there's any other questions. I think everyone needs to go and test it out. And then I suppose there would be would be some questions after that, but at least we um got some resources so that we can get started. I think it'll be really nice. Um yeah, I mean find me, find me. Find me on Twitter, you know, I'm, mm. except when I'm on vacation, I'm always around. So, uh, <laughs> so. excellent. Right. Okay. Thank you, everybody. So we had a, a short and sweet seminar, but very, very valuable and lots of information. So thank you, Sharon. Really appreciate it. Um, and I know you've still got the rest of your day ahead of you. So enjoy the rest of your day. Um, yes, I thank you. Lots of time yet. And, and I, will, yeah. I will immediately go off and make this public. So. Okay. <laughs> And then we'll go and find it. Sorry. Thank you so much. No worries. <laughs> Thanks, Sharon. Hi, everyone. You're welcome. Nice, nice virtually meeting you all. Yes. Hopefully one day in person. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs>